screen now. Okay, so once again, we are welcome to the Pharma Incubation of Information session. I believe that we are excited to learn a lot about Pharma Incubation of, and I believe that we already have our questions ready as well. So we have a lot packed for us for the session and um, would be happy that you follow along. So I'll be handing over to pharmacist um, Taiwo to take over so she can give us an in-depth, you know, explanation on what Pharma Incubation Hub is all about, our goals, our objectives, and what the program is about. Thank you very much. Okay, hello everybody. Good afternoon here from Nigeria, right? I know that a number of you are joining us from different parts of Africa, right? And that's so exciting for us at Pharma Incubation Hub, seeing that this is the first time that we're expanding the program to countries outside of Nigeria. I'm pharmacist Taiwo Olawaimi, and I am co-founder and executive director at Pharma Incubation Hub. And you all are here because of one singular reason. You want to be a part of the foremost fellowship program for pharmacy students in Africa, right? I'm excited to welcome you into the program. We're excited to provide you the needed launch pad <laughs> to help you to accelerate your growth personally and of course, career-wise when you eventually graduate from pharmacy school. I know that for many of you in pharmacy school, just like I was in pharmacy school, there was very limited degree of clarity on what we wanted to do post pharmacy school, right? Only very few people had their life figured out. Only very few people knew what they wanted to do one year, two years, three years, four years, five years post pharmacy school. But like we have continually uh, told students that we mentor under the Pharma Incubation Hub Fellowship, you know, clarity comes in phases. It's okay not to have everything figured out, but it would be foolhardy to stay in that point or place of ignorance and expect something magical to happen, right? You've got to intentionally seek that clarity by engaging with the right people, uh, committing yourself to learning, to training, to mentorship, right? And that's why we started Pharma Incubation Hub to offer that singular platform where we can incubate future healthcare leaders, right? Pharma Incubation Hub isn't just a mentorship program. It isn't just a leadership program. No, no, no. It's an incubator for future healthcare leaders who will someday transform the healthcare sector in Africa. So we are building gradually a pipeline of innovators, of incubators, of solution providers, right? For Africa's healthcare sector. So you are one of the saviors of Africa. You must realize that you are one of the saviors of Africa, but you will be incapable of saving Africa if you are ill-equipped. <laughs> If you don't even know your left from your right, if you don't have a good degree of self-awareness, if you are not competent, if you have not sharpened your skills, right? <laughs> and that's why we have designed Pharma Incubation Fellowship to take you through that journey of reawakening so that you know yourself and you know your place in the scheme of things. And in the course of this session, you will be learning more about the programmatic elements of uh, our Pharma Incubation Hub so that you can decide whether, yeah, whether you are able to commit to it or not. Like I tell every prospect, not everybody who applies to get selected and not everybody who gets selected will graduate from the program. Ask our alumni. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, I will take you briefly into, into the program, right? So that you can understand better what exactly the program entails and you can be able to ask uh, informed questions. All right. I believe you can see my screen at uh, this time. Good, good, good. Yes. Great. All right. 
So a little bit about us. Uh, I, I always cherish that memory. I was just a pharmacy student like you, like all of you, <laughs> in final year. And I was, I felt dissatisfied about the state of things in pharmacy school and with pharmacy students because I thought that pharmacy students could do more. I believed I could do more. I believe pharmacy students could do more. And myself and my friends decided that we should give back, so to speak, to the pharmacy student community at that time. You know, I, I know some of you probably have friends who are trailblazing in certain areas, and you hope that, oh, maybe I can be like this person someday, sometime, right? <laughs> and some of you, you know, have friends with whom you co-create ideas, and you always think about, you brainstorm together, right? And that was it for me as well, having that clique of friends with whom I could co-create a solution for pharmacy, for pharmacy students. And that tells us the importance of the importance of relationships, right? So if you are still with people with whom you cannot brainstorm ideas together, then you need to rethink your relationships. My friends and I at the time um, had graciously uh, enjoy some degree of exposure, you know, attending conferences, even being sponsored by our university to Rwanda at the time for the World Healthcare Student Symposium in 2019. And we felt we, we needed to, to help more pharmacy students to see the light, so to speak. I know pharmacy school is tough, right? The pharmaceutical chemistry, the pharmaceutics, pharmacognosy, and so on. It is challenging to say the least, right? And many of us, because of fail, failure, feel like it's better to stay put, focus head on on schoolwork uh, rather than allow room for distractions. Yeah, some things can be distractions. However, some things can be a good complement for your academic pursuits. I'm sure that you understand how the future of work has been transformed not only by the occurrence of the COVID-19 pandemic, but indeed by the digital trends and other trends that have revolutionized the labor market, the future of work. And it is definitely important for any young person who wants to thrive career-wise to sharpen their, their, their capabilities and build certain requisite skills that will help them stand out amongst their peers. Don't wait till you graduate from pharmacy school <laughs> before you start running helter skelter to patch up yourself. No, 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 no. This is a good time to start. I remember the singular reason why I chose to step beyond academics. So because I didn't want to regret. I didn't want to look back at my time in school and feel like I could have done more. And this was a case of a friend of mine. We were in pharmacy school together. We were classmates. Right in our final days, she had told me, oh, Taiwo, I feel like I wasted my time in school. I feel like I could have done more. That's actually the reality of some persons. I never wanted that to be my own reality. You've got to choose your own path, really. You've got to choose your own path. So if your own path is to be somebody who is exceptional, who is not only good academically, but excellent, even extracurricularly, then you're in the right place. If your goal is to be a well-rounded pharmacy student and ultimately a well-rounded pharmacist who is poised to deliver creative solutions to their world, then you are in the right place. And that's why we designed Pharma Incubation Hub right to provide pharmacy students in africa like you an innovative learning experience so that you are groomed into chain makers who will not only drive local impact but indeed global impact some of our alumni have had the opportunity to win fully funded scholarships to global conferences many of them are leading their own initiatives some of them right before pharma incubation hub some of them during the fellowship some of them after the fellowship, you hear from some of our alumni. We have here Taiwo uh, Shokumbi, who is leading the Young Researchers Hub at his university. Do you see? 
you can drive change wherever you are, right? With what you have. Some of us second guess ourselves because we feel like we are not enough, but you can do something with what you have right where you are. Of course, it's important to sharpen your capabilities so that you're empowered to drive that change. So at Farm Incubation Hub, we consider ourselves a career accelerator for future healthcare leaders in the pharmaceutical sector. We envision that future where pharmacy students are empowered. You see, empowerment is recurring, right? Empowerment, because there is a limit to what you can do if you're powerless yourself, if you don't have the knowledge, if you don't have the skill, if you don't have the network, if you don't have the clarity, you cannot be empowered to drive the change, to empower someone else close to you, to help your classmates and friends to see the light, to get better. If you are not enlightened, there is no way you can share the light. So we envision that future where pharmacy students can be empowered to be catalysts of innovation and who will drive positive transformation in healthcare and indeed the society at large. And you'll see that from the design of the program, it's a transformative learning experience through mentorship, through fostering a culture of self-development. <laughs> I, I, I remember when we, when we asked for feedback from some of our alumni, and one of them had said, they had struggle reading, but through the book reviews in the program, their hunger for studying was ignited. Some of them had never conceptualized the social impact project, but through the social impact project in the program, they began to see how they could contribute to their society. Some of them struggled with relationships, with networking, but in the course of the program, they were able to build good friendships. I smile when I see our alumni collaborate on research projects, collaborate to start their own initiatives. It's fantastic and it's beautiful to see. And ultimately, our goal is to cultivate evidence-based leadership. It's not enough to be skilled. It's not enough to be empowered. You must develop your leadership skill because a big challenge, a critical challenge that we have in Africa and indeed in healthcare is quality leadership, strategic leadership evidence-based leadership so to what end you get skilled you have the knowledge but you cannot uh, you cannot use it to drive sustainable change sector-wide change that will transform the sector transform the country or the continent to what end no 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 we are not empowering you for empowerment sake no we're empowering you for the long haul so that you can drive sustainable change as healthcare leaders in your various countries and indeed in africa and our core values are around accountability you see a good leader is accountable and self-leadership is very important when you get selected into the program don't expect that you'll be begged to show up no self-leadership realizes that one is accountable to oneself and the leaders so you will be accountable to yourself and to the hub coordinators to the program coordinators and the, the leaders of the fellowship otherwise you will be shown the way out and i will waste no time in helping you to pack your bags and go. <laughs> All right, that's on the light in it. Collaboration is also a core value. Collaboration, remember I had given instances of our alumni collaborating with themselves. Even within the fellowship, you have an opportunity to lead projects with other people on your team. There'll be case presentations where you co-create ideas with your group members. If you are the kind of person who likes to, who is a one-man army, one man mopo like we say here in nigeria you wouldn't thrive and there'll be a limit to your learning innovation very important we are in a digital era right and there is a need to ride on the waves of innovation in anything that we do in fact you will agree with me that healthcare healthcare as it stands now in our various countries and indeed in our continent requires that heavy heavy integration of innovation so that we can drive universal healthcare coverage right respect respect for self and others very very important you cannot be a successful person or a great leader if you don't have respect for self and others 
Our goals, like I said earlier, to foster innovative learning, to cultivate train makers. If you think that your goals align with ours, fantastic. We're in the right place. If you don't think this is what you want, if you don't think, oh, this was what you were expecting, it's okay not to apply. But if you think that you desire innovative learning, that you desire to be groomed as a worthy chain maker, fantastic, you're in the right place. If you think that your goal is to drive local and global impact, fantastic. If you think that your goal is to build sustainable impact in your community, fantastic. Otherwise, you need not apply. Okay. In the program, you'll find that we'll have virtual webinars, grateful for technology. And that's why we are able to have all of you from different parts of Africa. The program is totally virtual. Hopefully someday we will have physical hangouts, maybe in Rwanda, in Kenya, in Egypt, in Ghana, right? <laughs> and who knows, you know, fellow, fellow um, fellows themselves can group themselves together to have physical hangouts. That, that, that's a possibility. We had one a few months ago here in Lagos, Nigeria. But ultimately, the program is virtual. I understand that we are going to have different time zones. We'll do our best to ensure that the timing aligns for most persons, right? It's largely virtual. So you need data connection. You need data connection. You need a good phone or a laptop to help you connect. We are giving you this program for free, right? We could charge you for it. We could charge you for it, but you are going to experience this at no cost. But you've got to also sacrifice, right? Sacrifice for your learning by also committing to getting a phone if you don't have one or using the phone of someone close to you, a friend, a sibling, you need data connection, you need data subscription and good network. Aside the virtual webinars that are focused on different subject matters, from leadership to CV writing, LinkedIn optimization, to careers in pharmacy practice, and so on. <laughs> There's also the two-month mentorship program, which is the banger, really. <laughs> It is truly transformative. Many of you have never had mentors. You will have an opportunity to get a mentor for the first time. And our mentors are truly phenomenal. We pair you to a mentor based on your area of interest, whatever it is. Is it tech? Is it finance? Is it banking? Whatever it is. Is it drug development? Whatever it is. Is it machine learning? Anything. Is it community pharmacy? <laughs> Whatever it is, right? Go to town with it. We are committed to helping you to live the life of your dreams. We had a challenge last cohort helping one of the fellows to get paired to a mentor. He was interested in sports pharmacy. You will agree with me that it's not very common to find pharmacists practicing sports pharmacy, but we did our very best. We got a pharmacist all the way from Turkey and he was so excited to be a part of the program. So that, that, that is to show you the great length to which we will go for you. But you've also got to be committed to the cause. It's a two-way street. The research hub, phenomenal. I know many of you signed up for this program because of the research hub. Welcome on board. We've got a very strong research team that will take you from an amateur, a, a newbie, to a research pro you get an opportunity to collaborate with your colleagues to publish research papers. It's optional, it's not for everybody. We know not everybody is interested in research, but you have an option to sign up to the research hub. And if you sign up, you will have a phenomenal experience. First cohort, we started with only one university, University of Ibadan, Nigeria. We had about 15 fellows at the time. Then COVID struck in 2020, we expanded to other schools in Nigeria, and we had about 29 of them graduating. I think we had selected about 30 or so, but not everybody graduated. Cohort three, we, we also had it across Nigeria, about 38 of them graduated. Cohort four, about 39 of them graduated. Cohort five, we hope that we can accommodate about 100 of you, right? 
I tell you, we will have almost 300, 500, maybe even applications, but we can't select everybody. Not because we don't want to. First, your application has to stand out. So don't send in a trashy application. You're helping yourself not to get selected if you send in a trashy application. So reach out to people. You can even reach out to alumni <laughs> to help you review your applications. We've had people who got selected last cohort. They had reached out to alumni to help them review. Well, please, can you show me what to do? How can I answer this question? No, they will not tell you what to do, of course, <clears throat> but they will help you review so that you're better positioned to get selected. So put in a great application, uh, put your best foot forward. The goal of the application really is to help us know you better as an individual, to know what, what your interests are, what, you, what your goals are, right? And that will help us determine if we're a great fit for you. So if somebody doesn't get selected, doesn't mean we don't like them. Maybe it just means that we are not a great fit for them. All right, pardon me. My laptop is acting up. Uh, can you still see my screen? Please confirm. Yes, we can, but we can see like four different um, slides at the same time. Okay, great. Okay, okay great. good, good, good. So program outline. I think I will yield the floor to our program director to provide more insight on the program outline. Right. I think my job is done, right? <laughs> Okay, thank you. thank you very much. Um, sorry, okay. can you help me with the slide? It's like really zoomed up. Okay, just give me a moment. Okay, good. Good to go. Okay. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, um, Fam Taiwo, for that wonderful introduction about PIH. Um, okay, so for our program outline, the program actually runs for five months. And um, we have different um, activities that we do within the five months. The first three months would we'll have the virtual webinars. So um, the virtual webinars and the session will run for three months, including the clarity session. So we have um, twice a week, we have these virtual webinars where on one of the days of the week, we have you know, the participants themselves teach one another, learn from one another, and build each other up. Then on the other day of the week, we have facilitators from different aspects and spheres of life and of career path to be able to, you know, impact to the participants. You can ask questions, you can learn, you learn how to pitch, you learn how to write a CV, you learn, you know, about different roles and opportunities that are in the pharmacy profession that you can take up. You learn about digital skills, you learn a lot of things in those webinars. And then we also have a research of the research of and the um, the research of and the virtual webinars would run simultaneously. So the thing about the research of is not every participant would actually be a part of the research academy. So the research academy also, um, you know, takes a lot of processes for you to be part of it because we need dedicated people. I mean, people who would be willing to actually put in their energy um, in while during the period of the academy. So there are criteria that you'd have to follow. Um, you, When you get into the program, you know, the criteria will be shared and then you'll be screened and um, you'll be divided into groups. And hopefully at the end of the academy, of the research academy, you'd be required to write your own papers that will be submitted to journals and then accepted and you can learn from there as well. So it's really competitive. And I think uh, in this court, we are looking to pick only 25 people for the research set up. So you have to be able to stand out in your application. So um, we also have the mentorship. Um, the mentoring session will run for the last two months. I mentioned that it's five months, first three months for virtual webinars, then mentorship for like the next two months. So of course, in the application, we, um, there's a space for you to include or drop suggestions or names of people you'd like to mentor you so mm -hmm. we'd also go through that and consider some of those um you know names in your applications as well so hesitate to drop the names 
um, the mentorship we've gone for the last two months and would also share you know what is required of you doing the uh, mentorship session and we hope that you maximize that um so the fellowship framework we have for the first month we have the opening ceremony we have the grouping for case presentations and then we have research the research grouping we comment i will mention that you know we'll be doing social impact project right we'll do presentations you learn how to pitch you learn how to present you learn how to research quality articles quality slides to, you know do your case presentations as well then the research grouping will also comment so also um in the first month would we'll also start the screening to be able to join the research or the second month would we'll have clarity call so everyone in the program would um, be paired you get a call schedule a one-on-one -on -one call for every participant and then you would you know be able to have conversations be able to talk about you know we can help you in, um, in your career path we can help you to really really help you hold your hands to know what you exactly want to do and you know follow through that career path as well then case presentations we have the submission and the approval of the social impact projects in the program you would get to know you get to you know know details about the social impact project and you will be grouped so remember that i'm Taiwo also mentioned that you need to be able to work with team it's actually a skill that you build during the period of the program to work with team so it's not a one man it's not a one man um army so we have um the third month we also have mentor and mentee matching we would match you with uh, you know mentors in the program as well the third month you have the execution of the social impact project so for the social impact project in some cases it will require you to actually physically do something that is impactful in your community in your area right so it's just sometimes it might go beyond the you know the virtual thing that we are doing to be able to physically impact people in your environment and then you give reports so you are going to um put into practice you know hands-on experience you can say put into practice what you've learned during the period of the program so we have mentorship pairing then we have the mid court feedback we take feedback very very seriously and feedback is the reason why um every court is different from the other court two is different from court three court three is different from court four because of the feedback i'll be happy to receive your feedback for those who get into the program okay so can we have next slide okay so the fourth month we have execution of um, social impact projects then mentoring commences we also, um, okay, so like I mentioned, we have weekly Zoom sessions and Tao all meetings. So um, I mentioned that we would only have two, um, two major um, sessions per week because we also understand that participants are pharmacy students and we also don't want to, you know, we don't want to choke them with so much activities because primary assignment as a pharmacy student is your academics you need to be able to graduate as a pharmacist right before you can be able to come out and say i'm a pharmacist i want to do this i want to do that right so it's very important we also take that into consideration as well um okay so can we have the next slide so i believe that from all of these presentations we can start um putting down or jotting down questions or potential questions that we might have that we want to ask so so that you don't forget your questions is very important for you to share okay so can we have the next slide on the program reports for cohort four okay so Okay, so um, for the program reports for court four. Okay, so let me just um, read that from my end. The program reports for court four. Okay, let me read that from my end. 
Okay, so in court four for the program report, we have we we got a response of we're able to achieve seventy percent participant got career clarity. So remember, I mentioned that there's a clarity call. Also, um, beyond the clarity call, the mentor mentee program would also help you to you know guide you along your career path to help you further see the opportunities that are available for you to annex as a pharmacy student. We also have that, you know, 64% of the participants gain research knowledge. 91% of the participants learned about new career opportunities in healthcare. You know, as pharmacy students, um, as pharmacy students, right, we sometimes we are limited by what we see. We believe that, okay, um, um, the, the opportunities that are only available to us is just community, industry, academia, and, um, you know, things like that, really. And there are, there are more opportunities, there are more roles that we can actually fill in as pharmacists when we graduate beyond, you know, the, the um, normal areas that we know. And even in the areas that we know, there are still some roles, there are still some innovative things, innovative works, innovative things that we can actually, you know, um, come up with, even in the in the community pharmacy, in the clinical pharmacy, there are, there are ways in which you can, you know, bring in innovative skills to be able to, if that is what you're passionate about, which is very, very important. We had 64% of the participants gained new soft skills, like leadership, like communication skills, how to pitch, elevator pitch, things like that. You know, people, we have quite, a, a, it's 7% of the participants, you know, learned that, learned, picked up those skills. So can we have next slide? Okay, so for the mentorship report, we had 40 mentees and we had 34 mentors. So in some cases, you know, we might have a mentor being paired to two mentees, sometimes just one, but we try as much as possible not to have, you know, too many mentees paired to a particular mentor so that the mentor and the mentee, they can have time to have that communication. They can have time to learn. They can have time to invest, you know, in that, in the mentees assigned to them. Okay, so we, 76% um, of, of participants got, me, got mentored for the first time. So there, there are some people that they, they've never heard about mentorship. They've never experienced what mentorship is. This program also helped them you know, to be able to understand what a mentor-mentee relationship is and to be also to also be able to build on that and enjoy the benefit of, you know, having someone guide you in your career path as well. Um, so we were, uh, were able to, 91% of the participants were perfectly paired with, you know, the, ment the mentor that was just right for them. That's why we also, um, you know, we, we listen to, we read whatever feedback you give in your, um, in the application concerning the mentor that you want. During the course of the program, we would also, you know, get to know you better, what your career choices are, what is it that you enjoy doing, what is it that you're proposing, so that we can be able to perfectly fit you to like a right mentor so that you can actually gain, you know, necessary things that you have to gain from there. Okay, so can we have next slide? Okay, so for the research up reports, 16 participants passed the selection criteria. Remember I mentioned that the research up is not just every participant that will be part of the research up. You'll be carefully selected based on some certain criteria. So only 16 participants passed the selection criteria. And two research papers were completed and submitted to the International Journal of Antimicrobial Agents. So these 16 participants were paired into two groups. Each of those groups were given topics to work on. And, uh, you know, and so we have, you know, research leaders in the academy, in the research academy, who would go through um, the articles you've written, give you feedbacks, right? So that you can be able to develop your research writing skills. Participants were trained on choosing the research topic, understanding research papers, research reporting and research writing, then journal submission. There's a lot of things that go into this. It's not just, oh, I just feel like doing this, doing like, you know, it takes a lot of training to be able to 
actually come up with a good research topic that even when the journal, by the time you submit it to a journal, they'd be like, oh, this is great. We need to have it in our, you know, in our archives. So yes, it takes a lot of training to do that, which we get to do in our research up. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so I believe that we've been waiting for this part of the um, session. This is the application journey. I've had people reach out to me about, um, so now that I've applied, what next? How do I apply? What are the ways in which I can apply? What is the motivation letter? I don't have a CV. So many, so many questions. We'll be addressing some of those questions here. And there would also be, you know, a spot for question and answer for you to ask all your questions. And we are ready to answer your questions as well. So can we have next slide? Okay, so for the application journey, the first thing you get to do is to fill the application form. So, um, of course, some of you have filled the application form already. Um, we would also share, after this meeting, we would share the application form on the WhatsApp group. If you are not on the WhatsApp group, we would share the link in the chat box um, so that you can join the WhatsApp group, right, and stay abreast of any information after this info session. First thing is to fill the cohort form. Now, let's talk about filling the cohort form. In the cohort form, we, we get to, you know, get we collect your details. There's a, there's a section where you fill in your details, like your email address, um, you know, your name, your country, your school. But the key things that I believe that are giving people a lot of, you know, setbacks in, in applying for the court is the three key things, which is motivation letter, CV, and then evidence of studentship. I believe evidence of studentship is not something that is difficult. You can just give us a copy of your ID card, or if you don't have a school ID card yet, you can give us a copy of your course form. Any of that would do. And then let's go to motivation letter. So when it comes to motivation letter, what do we expect you to write in your motivation letter? We really expect you to tell us why you want to be selected into the program. So you can, why do you want to be selected into the program, right? You need to be able to articulate that into proper words. Why you want to be selected into the program, um, introduce yourself Tell us why you want to be selected into the program, number one. You also need to tell us at least what have you done? What are the things you've done? Were you a, um, did you lead a project in your class? Did you lead anything in class? Maybe you, you know, it, it's as simple as even if you were just part of um, maybe a group of people that you are always in charge of giving people materials in class. That's leadership. That's you handling something. Tell us about it, you know. Tell us about those things you've handled in your motivation letter. How do those things relate to um, the things you... How do those things relate to the things you want to do, the career path you choose to follow and you choose to pick? Those things are very important to your motivation letter as well. You also want to tell us why it's, how it aligns with your goals. How, does, how is it that if you are selected for the program, how does it align with your goals how does it align with your um career goals career purpose you know things like that we need to know you also need to you can also share your skills at least you know it, throughout pharmacy school what skills have you picked you like to read what it's not just about you liking to read right what are the things you've picked you know we need to just you need to be able to sell yourself basically you really need to sell yourself when it comes to writing your motivation letter <laughs> And then you conclude, right? Then let's go to CV. So I, I believe that, you know, some people are like, oh, I, I've not done any extracurricular activity in school yet. I'm not, do, I'm not active in PAN. So how do I really come up with a CV, right? So um, first of all, let's just go through what a CV should contain. Let's go to what a CV should contain. So you can just um, include your contact information. I'm not talking about your home address. Please don't put your home address in your CV. So put um, your name, your um, email address. You can put your LinkedIn. You can hyperlink your LinkedIn profile 
in your CV as well, right? You can put that in your CV so that we can also get to know you better from there. You can put, then you put your objective or your personal statement. So um, your personal statement can be like, oh, I'm a student pharmacist with interest in blah, blah, blah. You'll we'll just sell yourself in just very short sentences, please. Very, very short sentences. Then you can put your education, your educational background. So you, we don't really need to know about your primary school, right? We don't really need so much information about your secondary school as well. You can just leave it at BFAM, your school, the degree, the name of your school, and then the year. So if, of course, we believe that this project is targeted at pharmacy students, so you can just put the year you enter till date, right? So that's fine. Then um, you can maybe include some relevant courses and projects that you've done. So I like relevant courses. If you volunteered for um, anything, put your volunteering, where you volunteer, the organization you volunteered for, then you can just highlight some, maybe one or two points of what you did while you were volunteering and make it be make it like action point like okay um coordinated a team of 10 people this and that you know you have to like put just in very short simple sentences put that in your cv as well so if maybe during maybe you've um you've also um done like a part-time or volunteer work in the community pharmacy in an industrial pharmacy anywhere you can put it in your cv as well so that you know and Again, it's not just about putting that you've done this. What did you learn? What did you gain? What are the skills that you picked from those places? I like them in your CV as well. Then you can also highlight some of your skills and achievements in your CV. Um, um, you pay attention to details. You just let us know your skills. I like your skills. And please don't highlight like 20 skills, you know, just keep it short. Five, four to five is enough. Then you can also, if you are into any extracurricular activities, maybe you're into sports, you're into, you know, you can add that also in your CV as well. So um, I believe that those are the key things that we need to know. So uh, you can, maybe when the question and answer session com comes up, you can also ask for the question. Education. We, the team at the backstage, will review the application, and then selected participants would move to the next. You'd receive, you know, email. So please, now that you have applied for the beginning, so this is at least even if you don't get into the program, at least I believe that you'd learn one or two things like email etiquette, right? So now that you've applied, always check your email addresses. It's very important. You know, you are going to corporate organizations. You need to pick up those skills so you need to check your email because would we'll also give you a deadline for selected participants you can't be you can't apply for something and then you're not checking your email you're not responding to your email those things those skills are very important so selected participants would um move to the next stage and they'll be notified via email then the final stage is where selected participants will be interviewed so you get a one-on-one -on -one interview so that we can also get to know you beyond you know, what you've written. We want to know you personally to see whether you are fit and capable enough to be able to follow through the program because, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a process, right? And we, and we are putting energy into this and we need to be able to um, ensure that what, what we are putting in is um, sustainable enough for you, for the people that are receiving it and it can produce results. Then um, participants who we'll finally pass through the interview stage and are selected, will receive a congratulatory message. Okay, so um, without further ado, we'll be moving into the alumni spotlight. So um, we don't just want it to be that. It's just going to be the team just talking to you about PIH. We also want you to hear about, you know, some of the alumni that have gone through this program. We want you to hear from them. We want you to, you know, know about them. We'd have someone read their bio before they come up to give us, you know, tell us about what they learned during their time at PIH and how it impacted them even after they, um, you know, after they finished the program. So um, the first alumni that we'll be having is Joanna 
So, uh, Joanna, can you confirm if you are on the call? Okay, so Joanna is not on the call, but I can see one of our alumni. I can see, um, I can see Shokumbi Taiwo. So please, Shokumbi Taiwo. Um, Samuel, please, can you help, help us read Shokumbi Taiwo's bio as we bring him up on stage to share about his experience in PIH and how PIH has impacted him? Over to you, Samuel. Thank you. And so we can actually engage and interact in the chat box. You can use um, the emojis to interact so that we know that you are following in the program as well. Thank you. Yeah, so all right. Um, the bio for Shokumbi Taiwo. Shokumbi Taiwo is a member of African Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene. He's a fifth year student of pharmacy at Obafemi Awolowo University and a public health enthusiast. He is an, is a firm advocate of SDG3 among the vulnerable rural dwellers and the people living in the slums through research, publication, research, policy, advocacy, and health volunteering. His advocacy has been recognized by both national and international organizations as he was nominated for and made into the final round of the act Citizen, Active Citizenship Award Nigeria in the health category, and also selected by the African Leader Malaria Alliance, AMLA, as one of the Nigerian AMLA Youth Malaria Army. He is a PIH Cohort 2 alumnus. Taiwo is a community builder, a founder, and a leader. So with um, one welcome, let's um, um, welcome Taiwo. Over to you, Taiwo. Uh, yeah, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Um, thank you, Mr. Samuel, for the citation. Thank you so much. Um, um, first of all, I would love to thank um, the leadership of PIH for inviting me to share my post-PIH journey. And then I, I should I should say this that um, listening to pharmacy style is always uh, is always amazing, and I think that's one of the things that I've missed in um, PIH. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to share my PIH um, post, my my post PIH journey and how it impacted my my life and then my um, my career, so to speak. Right. Um, <clears throat> and then I'm going to explain that in in uh, more like in three subtopics, okay? But before then, I would, I would love to say that PIH, Pharma Incubation of actually uh, is still in us the culture of excellence, you know? Um, and not just excellence, all around excellence. Just like pharmacist, I was saying the other time that our pharmacy school can actually be so, you know, can so, so busy. And that business actually justified, right? It is very, very justified because nobody want to feel, I mean, especially when you come from this part of the world, Oh, hey, you where the system is pass, receipt, repeat, withdraw. So nobody want to fall in the other side that is not that place. And so almost everybody just, you know, just um just busy just to, to ensure that they are not at the other end. Now then um so coming into farm farmer farm incubation of you know is something that actually helps us to you know not only instill the culture of excellence in us, help us to be able to more like strike balance. More like giving us a better perspective than our contemporaries in the class. So that's one of the things that you know, PIH actually you know, does for did for us and he did for me, so to speak. And it's gonna do the same thing, the same thing for you, okay? So the, the, the fact that we're able to gain you know a, a broad perspective about you know about life one, about pharmacy practice, about personal development, and more. And uh, 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 as a matter of fact, in this part of the world where we came from, uh, um, it seems that most of us in that part, we're so, so serious with academic, just to ensure that, like I said, nobody want to be at the other side of the stuff. We just want to ensure that we face the result. We see your name. Um, Tai was shocking on the street pass. You know, you just go on because you don't want to embarrass your family too. And you'll probably embarrass your son too. So we just want to ensure that we, we, we do all of that. 
then the, then the PRE giving a, a broad perspective about life, telling us that, of course, you should do well. Like I said, it's instead in all the culture of excellence. You should do well. You must do well. And then as I doing well, there are actually more to life. And then make us to realize the fact that we are, uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are we are a global citizen. Like I do say to myself, I'm a global citizen. And I got that actually from PIH, okay? Now, I don't see my, my classmates as a competitor. Like we are now, you know, we are, no, no, no. I don't see that, don't see that way. I see it, you know, like a, a global citizen. You know, I'm not competing with anybody here. I'm compete, competing at the global at the global level. So in other words, for, for, for me to actually do well, in, uh, um, on, on a global scale, then I would need I need basic global skills, right? To be to be global relevant, I need to do things in a global um in, in, in a global you know in a global way. So that's actually still in us that that consciously that guy you're not competing with that guy in your class actually right we put you are you are a globe you're a global citizen you're a global person you should actually um you actually see yourself beyond that classroom so like i said earlier i'm going to explain uh, my my um, post um pih um journey and how it has impacted my life in three um sort of topics and that the first one is that information access and mentorship and basically that's all um PIH did for us, you know, like I do say that information actually determines the quality of our life, right? The, um, the, the, the kind of information we access actually determines uh, the quality of our life. If we have access to quality information, we don't live a quality life. And that is one of the things that PIH actually did for us. You know, they gave us quality information, quality information, and to that quality information we're able to make quality decisions that are actually shaping our lives so, so some of us when we get there like i'm just using some of us like talking for the whole alumni right when we got there we are just naive guys that's just like when you're like pharmacy guy you don't even know our right to let but then to the information our life was transformed that okay we know our right to let our our left to right and that's one thing i'm very very grateful that prh actually did for me like I said, it's not it's not only me, it is for all the alumni. I'm gonna do the same too for you. So the quality of information we assess them actually transform our life. Like I said, life is transformed actually by the, um information, the kind of information you assess to. And that's one thing that PIH actually um did for us. And I'm gonna do that the same for you. Another interesting thing about um another interesting thing about um information is that of course some people actually have information but they are not willing to share for you. Now, not willing to share for you is not necessarily that they are bad people. It, it could be that they are so busy or you're not in the, in the, in the community. You're not in the, you're not sitting together in the same, um, in the same circle. That's why you don't accept that information. But at PIH, these people, I mean, the leadership of, um, of, of PIH, pharmacist Taiwo, pharmacist Omulayo, pharmacist Yusuf, Every person that actually works at PIH, they are so deliberate in taking us to actually give us quality information. They are not holding it. Now, your friends in that class might actually be holding information to you, right? Because they want to do better than you, whatever it is now. But this this is a, a safe place. This is a, a, uh, a safe platform that actually, you know, no hiding anything, nothing to hide, give you everything freely, give you everything freely that. And I'm going to transform our life. I do say, and I'm still saying it, everywhere I have the opportunity to you know, discuss PIH. In fact, most of the people who are close to me know that I'm very advocate of PIH. Why? Because it's actually one of the foundation, um, um, one, of the, one, one of the platforms that actually created whatever I do today, whatever we do tomorrow, whatever <laughs> my life is going to turn out tomorrow, which is definitely going to be great. It's actually PIH. Because I was a naive human being like that. You know, probably just left second, 200 level. When we joined in 2020, wait, wait, wait. and then they just gave us information here and there, here and there. I was like, wow. So there's more to all of this. Thing. And then we, we began to, you know, to work with it. So again, at PIH, you know, just like we, uh, we, we got quality information. And like I said earlier, that it's the quality information that actually transforms human life. And the quality of individual life is at the mercy of the information we all assess. So that's, the, that's what PIH is going to do for you. I'm going to cite examples. And this some of the examples, some of the instances I'm going to cite here, um, probably from Mrs. Taiwo, from Mrs. Layo, from Mrs. Yusuf, they're going to be hearing them for, for the first time. Okay, I'm going to give, like, for this information part, I'm going to give probably um, to give me examples of how it affected my life. 
Now, the first, um, um, the first, I think one of the first classes we had was on SDG. SDG. You see, when Mr. Sam um, that um, that amazing and trust citation, he said, um, I'm an advocate of SDG. Yeah, the first place I would hear of SDG was actually in that class. But like I said, that most of the things I, 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 I am today, I will be tomorrow. It's actually, um, I got the foundation from PIH, okay? Gave me the information and I was able to, you know, to be responsible enough to take action on to, most of this information, right? So the, the first place I'll hear about SDG, Sustainable Development Goal, is actually on in that class. I think it was um it was from Mr. K Day will be if I'm very correct, right? Or um something big, something like that. And then he introduced to us on SDG. And then after that class, I think there was um this Millennium Fellowship stuff. And I applied for the Millennium Fellowship because I um, I knew that okay, Millennium Fellowship is about SDG. SDG. Then I just I mean, from the class, I got to understand about Millennium Fellowship. I applied for the Millennium Fellowship. And then in the course of the Millennium Fellowship, I was able to conceptualize social, um, what do you call it now, social impact work. Um, that was on malaria and all of that. And that particular outreach that I did opened me into leadership. Now today, we ask me, leadership is a key, important part of my life. Yes. I actually take leadership very serious. Now, I took leadership very serious now because somebody introduced me to SDG, SDG right? And from the SDG, I did a project that requires um, that requires management of people, um, um, resources to actualize the goal. And I think that's what leadership is all about. You're able to manage yourself, you're able to manage others, and you're able to manage resources to actualize the common goal. And then that's from the SDG that we did. So from that particular stuff, I was contacted by, um, by an organization to aid the organization to be responsible for the organization in Ocean State. I, was a, I think I was still in the level level then. I mean, an organization entrusted me with their, with their name in, in, in a whole state. I mean, that began to open me into leadership to the point that some of the people that we work with in that organization, you know, sent me some some interesting thing interesting thing that i still hold on dearly now i hold on to dearly last some i think last month i was talking to one of them like oh you told me this thing when i was working again i'm very grateful for what you told me it's actually working for me and i, I hold on to it now all of these things don't mind the stories please mind where we're coming from that i attended pih opened me to sdg from sdg i understand okay millennium fellowship is for social impact work and then from there, I applied. And in the course of apply, I did an outreach that you know made me to be able to manage resources with people myself. Because during that time, we we're even having an exam in school. So I was able to do all of those stuff. Every one of us actually passed. We didn't have to repeat. <laughs> Glory to God. And then um um uh, yes, yeah, that happened me into leadership. Another interesting thing, another interesting thing there is that um there is Mr. Heddy, Mr. Heddy, Mr. Heddy, I think he's now Dr. Heddy. That it took us financial, um, financial literacy, you know. That's to tell us that um, PIS is not actually concerned, not only concerned about our it's actually concerned about our whole life, our personal development as pharmacy undergraduate. Now, um, the man actually talked to us in, um, um, financial literacy. I think that would be my first time of being in such a class. As much, now, again, I have so much interest in finance, right? Because I was introduced to that class, and from that class, I went on Instagram, I went on Twitter, find people who are in that space, and I followed them. And those people began to you know, send more information on financial literacy, send more information, on, and I began to, okay, okay, this is how I manage my finance. This is how I increase my finance. This is investment opportunity. This is how you do budgeting. This is what they call um, portfolio. So amazing stuff, because PIH organized a, um, because PIH organized, is am I still audible? Yes, you are. Right. Yes, okay, thank you. Now, because PIH organized that financial literacy class for us, and from there I was on the, uh, everywhere on the internet finding people who major in that space. And I began to learn from them. Again, before Dr. Heddy, now Dr. Heddy left that class. He introduced some of um budget among all things and then 
From that 2020 that I had attended the class, I've been keeping my investment portfolio till tomorrow. Yes, I, um, I've been keeping my investment portfolio because of that class. Because of that class. Can you see how important, how that thing actually, um, um, actually help our life? How help our life? Because of that singular class, and then, you know, till tomorrow, all of these things are still with me. Another one is actually, I had a session with Francis Taiwo. I'm sorry, I'm talking on information. I'm trying to give instances on it. So don't be bored, please. Okay, I had a session with pharmacist Taiwo on, um, I said I have um, anxiety when I have to talk in public and something like that. And it made me, she made me to realize that um, um, courage is not absence of fear. It is actually showing up regardless of fear. You see that I still think, I still take a lot of them. I mean, I still take them. I'm very serious. I have them because they are things that actually, um, more like the people will call it, um, more like something that actually transformed my life. Most of these things I'm actually sharing, um, it's not that like I hold them somewhere because I, you know, they impacted my life, and I cannot forget. You can't forget what impacted your life, okay? So I can remember the words of Mrs. Taiwo Fabati <laughs> because that that particular word actually changed my life, changed my perception. I don't care whether I'm anxious, I'm anxious I'm, I will stay sure. Let me be stammering while talking. I don't care. I'll get out of it and not get comfortable and not speak. Why? Because somebody told me that fear, anxiety is not actually absence of, you know, courage is not actually absence of all of those stuff. Rather, it is showing up regardless of that. And now, um, yeah, and that actually helped me a, a, a lot. And the last one is fishing now, fishing. Um, they taught us on that, and I, th I think we had a session about that. We had my team now, one of the gift pharmacy um, PIE gave us is Naomi Ibrahim, pharmacist, is now a pharmacist, pharmacist Ibrahim, which is very a friend of the hub at um, because pharmacist Taiwo mentioned it, that's why I mentioned it. Oh, he's a friend of the hub at Oba Femi Aulo University that he comes around almost every time because we appear together to work together on on pitching and all of those stuff. From there, I got that would be my first time of hearing stuff like that, and then. Um, over time, now I I I I have the I have each I have now I've been you know, more like pitching uh, your ideas yell and there yell and there yell and there whether you write it or you, pres uh, you presented it. I think earlier this 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 month I still pres um, I still pitch my idea to a particular group of you know, people. Yes, here at this inside this room I still did the same thing. Now I got when they send me the mail that I need to pitch this thing. I'm not looking confused. I do not look confused because I attended a session that opened me, that introduced what pitching is to me. That pitching is to me. So I take it very, very, you know, um, very, very serious. So that's uh, one of the things that actually the PIH, my post PIH um, journey, as far as information, you know, I said I was going to explain them in terms of information, you know, um, determines the quality of our life, transform of our life. And I've been able to cite instances, examples of how they are, you know, help me. Another one is access. Access. Now, PIH actually gave us access. Can you imagine having a chance to be being pharmacist Taiwo status? Now, pharmacist Taiwo actually posts a lot of opportunities, opportunities like shock you with opportunities on the status. Now, imagine me not being on that, not having that kind of access, you know. I'm not going to see it. I'm not going to use it. Again, as much as information actually help our life, the access to help our life, access help our life, access help our life. I, I think I was getting when we get to the um, career store. Do let me move too forward. I mean, imagine the kind of access with um with pharmacist um with pharmacist Yusu. Um, I think he's now um he's now in Oxford for um doing his masters. The kind of access. I mean, they they, they, they love career. Um, career um, advancement discussion I have had with pharmacist, pharmacist Yusuf because I met him on this platform. If I did not attend this platform, if I was not, you know, if I was not uh, um, accepted, I will not have that kind of access. In other words, um, the incoming try to ensure that you have your 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 application. Have it, let it make a lot of sense so that you can enjoy the kind of access we enjoy. Like I do say, having opportunity to. Having access to these people is really, is really, uh, it's really, um, it's really a game changer for most of us. Okay, and then um, because we, I think we are a lot of guys who are going to present. Let me just go to the last one. 
And then the last one is um on the mentorship. Okay, let me use that access to discuss on career too, right? Uh, let me use that part to discuss on career. Are we? Let's just talk about mentorship. Yeah, mentorship, yes. Like again, I think these are three important things that actually transform humans like generally, whether from career perspective or from life in general, the quality of information you assess, the the kind of people you can assess. Okay. I'm not actually a millionaire or billionaire because I do not ask, I do not really, really assess. Um I mean, if I sit down with Tony Elumel, I'm definitely going to be, you know, I mean, having access to his mind, I'm definitely going to be because information and access, you get, that's to tell you that that's another, um, these are the things that actually impact our lives, the kind of quality of information we have at our disposal, the access, the kind of people we can access in our life, and then the last one, the mentorship, now mentorship is like guiding youth. people who are going ahead of us to guide us and find an error find an error now another interesting thing is that pharmacists that can get lost like if there is not a key we get lost now imagine you can you can major in academia you can go to community you can go to clinical you can go to public health and you can just get lost but the concept of mentorship is like okay i have I have interest in this, even my interest. I don't even think whether I have interest in it. But as as at now, this is the interest. And then the people yeah, um, who is practicing in that in that space, I have interest in. And then begin to okay, do it this way, do it this way. Okay, I now began to seem okay. I think I thought I like this. I don't like this. I'm not some of us because of the um 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 it's so broad, right? Um, pharmacy practice is so broad, the field is so broad, you could go anywhere and you don't want, you, and sometimes we don't know what we know. So we, 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 we mentorship actually guides us to so ensure that we make the best this, this decision. I, I'm like talking about mentorship and access. I think I got that from pharmacist Angela, pharmacist Angela Okoli. I mean, myself and Naomi were paired together to pharmacist and, um, Angel, Angela, right? And then she actually helped my life so much when i wanted to come into a research space i was like did i need research but i, I think i'm the last person that joined that research of that time um then you could join but now you cannot just join you have to pass through the process now even if i had to yes sir yes ma yes ma if i had to pass through that 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 um that space of of you know to coming coming to research i probably will not join because i was contemplating like did i need research some of us we want more what we, we have thought is that people in academics they are the one that need research and all of that and i was like i'm not going there so i needed to go and find someone to talk to and that's the mentorship aside the fact that she has taken us to um the concept of community practice yes i subscribe to community practice then she has taken us through the concept of community practice and all of those amazing stuff i still needed to wait to her to go to her that uh, pharmacist um angela please um this research stuff do you think i need it and say wow you need it you really need it and that actually helped us to um now pharmacist i will say that we're able to do something around around um young researchers over University. I'm sorry, I'm not meant to be discussing that here, but I, 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 I'm that actually assist because we I had a mentorship session with pharmacist Angela and she told me the importance of research, even in my community practice or whatever practice I want to imagine. If I didn't go there, there probably will not be something like you know, researchers call. But because of that mentorship, we're able to guide us. You see that everything that I actually done in, in, in probably in my life so far post PIH actually be influenced by PIH. And I'm so, so, so grateful, so, so grateful for, for, for it. My first publication was actually to pharmacy studies, right? I think there's no access to pharmacy studies. I think there's no mentorship to, of course, a mentor in the research too. Yes, we wrote a research paper. Yes, from PIH, yes, we wrote a research paper. I think we were one, those guys, we were one of the, those guys that wrote research paper. Yes, we, we, we had a research paper on vaccine development in Africa. Yes, yes, we were, we were, it was pharmacist Yusuf that actually took us through all those process. Now we began to, you know, took us through, through the process of research and all. Then we now 
oh good yes yes that's true so pharmacists you should go through that process and that that's why we can know now we can call ourselves researcher right we can say we are student researcher because of pih introduce us to research that would be my first time of seeing research actually too that would be my first time of you know undergraduate doing conducting research to PIH. I think that that's that is not all really because we have a lot of people to talk. I covered a lot of things here. And then but then I I, I think um I'm trying to look to my scene. Yeah I, I think um I think I've been I'm mean, I've been able to do justice on my own side my post PIH journey and then how it impacted me and I've been able to sell it in three information access mentorship and all of those stuff. And another thing is that most of the some of the things we do as the help actually it's not that we copy the faculty. I mean, we are researchers, right? <laughs> yeah, some of our structure in PI is still some of the things we, we learned from P, um, from pharma incubation, though, telling us that because we are here, we are able to duplicate some, some of the things they did here. For instance, at, at in that part of the world, we did. <laughs> the part uh, that part of the other uh, part of the world we did mentorship too is because we learned how mentorship helped people to write re research paper and to publish it that's why we're able to duplicate it so i think that's all my that is my uh, post peer uh, post pih journey thank you so much pih like i said i've always been an advocate of pih and then i've always been thank you so much from sister Taiwo. thank you for me sister Molayo. thank you for me sister Yusu. thank you for me sister Zine, right? Thank you everyone, every um the leadership of PIH for giving it for giving all this platform that actually transformed our life. I think I'm speaking in terms of almost everybody, all of our normal and and lastly, I think with from five, what some of the things we learned from PIH, some of our people at this part of the world in Obafemi Aulo University Pharmacy, some of I think we've been a source of encouragement to them too. Like they are not only that guy now that will just book, book, book. They are doing amazing well in their books. And of course, they are doing other things too in terms of keeping impact and then research too. Just because some of us, we were here and we were able to see some of the things we are doing outside there. And they see that we too, we are not mediocre in ourselves. Like I said, PIH refers to the culture of excellence. And they see that they start all of this thing, we are doing all of that. And then all of that. And then you go, oh, yeah, your pharmacy school has actually changed because we attended. PIH. Thank you so much. God bless PIH. Thank you, everyone. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Taiwo. <laughs> Thank you for that wonderful um, feedback. We um, showed everyone in this call have actually <clears throat> gained um, a lot of insight experience your post um, PIH experience to gain uh, we know now that PIH is going to give us information and a whole lot of um, other resources that, that, that have the potential to change um, our, our lives so thank you very much um, we, we, we hope to ask you questions now but then um, just to save time we'll just move on to the um, to the next and nominee. So if you have a question, you can just note them, you can drop them on, on the chat box, or if you want to ask directly, just write them, them down to the question and answer time. So we'll be moving on to um, the next alumni, um, Johanna Ilimubola. So Johanna Ilimubola is a pharmacy student, content writer, and a mental health advocate. She's creatively create content through selling storytelling and content that currently leading sorry sorry about that she's creatively creates content through storytelling and is currently the content writer and public health team pass over she exhibits several skills such as team management leadership creating creative writing critical thinking and editing to mention a few she advocates for mental health because she understands how to affect different aspects of her life joanna is passionate about impacting lives around her she she will find you will find her involved in strategic volunteering if she's not writing recently she has started advocating for LinkedIn as she discovered people around her were not enlightened about these opportunities. Joanna believes she is 
shining light and she often referred refer to herself as shining light. She wants to live her life feeling fulfilled that she did the most. So over to you, Joanna, for your feedback. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Benga, for the introduction. Please, can you hear me? You need to move closer to your mind. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, good afternoon. I'm grateful to the PIS team from Omalayo from Taiwo for this opportunity to speak about my PIS journey. I'm Joanna Leumbayo, a pharmacy student at Obafemi Aloha University. And I was a member of Court 3 of PIH. So I'll just, I've actually learned from, like, I have a similar story with what uh, Mr. Taiwo said earlier. So I'll just try to not repeat the same thing that he has said. So for my PIH journey, I, would, I heard about PIH. Okay, I heard about it for about um, the court too, but it was late when I heard about the application for court too. And I submitted past the deadline. I just, I knew about it late. So when I submitted the, uh, my application form, it was after the deadline, but I just wanted to still try whether I would still be picked. And I was not picked, but I had classmates that were actually picked for court too. Um, Mr. Tai was part of those people that were picked. And I attended their graduation ceremony. And I saw how PI actually impacted them. And I made sure I applied for court three. And I was privileged to be picked among, among those people. So for my PIH journey, I it has impacted my career. PIH is actually a family I'm grateful for because it's more than a fellowship. It's actually a family of, and their vision is to raise exceptional pharmacists. And they do all in their power to do, um, to, they're actually dedicated in raising pharmacists that actually can do more. Yeah, so one of the things PIH has done for me that have impacted my career has given me clarity. So when you're applying for the, please, can you hear me? Yes, ma. yes, ma. yes, yes, ma. Okay. Can hear you. okay, thank you, thank you. So it has given me clarity. So, one of the things when you're applying for your doing this application process, you say maybe they'll ask you maybe your interest. Okay, it's okay not to know your interest, but most times, if you put a particular interest you have discovered or you think like you may not be so sure, it does not mean you cannot change your career path along the way. Okay, so they're going to give you a mentor, no matter how difficult it's going to be, because I remember hearing about sports pharmacy. From when somebody in court for like so there's something about sports pharmacy and it was difficult but they actually got the person that was interested in that aspect of pharmacy so they actually dedicated to give us the best that's one of the things about PIH so I got clarity because I was peer with a mentor from Adela of Oxford and she was ready to help me hold my hands through my pharmacy journey I also had discussions with her so you get a mentor who is actually interested in making you also do well like they're actually doing well. And I had to okay, another point I will talk about about my PIH journey. It gave me it gave me a renewed mindset as a pharmacy student. Okay, we know how pharmacy student uh, pharmacy can be. I was all choked up with all our courses and I'm sure that there's no pharmacy school that is very easy. So depending on your school, you also have everybody's being choked up with um with different courses, bulky courses, and you have a you have this um you're most likely to feel like, okay, I don't think I can engage in any other thing apart from just reading my book. Like, it's possible to be scared about not trying to do other things. But PIH made me know that I can actually push beyond my limit. I can manage my time. I can engage in social impact. I can, I can also do other things and try to balance with its pharmacy school. And like what I was said at the beginning of this um, session, information session, she said, if you're not enlightened, you'll not be able to share your life. So... Prior to actually enlightening you, it gave it enlightened me, it renewed my mindset that as a pharmacist, then I can actually still do more. Then I also get, got to know about IPSF through PIH well, because they're going to actually invite different speakers that will actually broaden your horizon about different, like this International Pharmaceutical Students Federation, about the things they do, how you can actually engage in it even as a pan site. So that's one of the things that PIH actually helped me to do. It actually enlightened me. And I can also enlighten people around me about the things I've learned through PIH. Then it helped me to build valuable connections, even till now, that I'm still leveraging on. And there are some people in my court that I, I didn't know before, but we built 
close friendship in which I can reach out to them. Like now, I recently got um, I was recently picked as a Minion Fellow 2020, and I remember reaching out to somebody in my court, that is court three, that was actually picked during her, the year she applied. About okay, how should I go about it? So you get the you get connection, you build valuable connection about people that are actually pharmacy students that are also doing well in their various school. Even from time also helped me to write recommendation letters. So it's actually a more than a fellowship. You get like a family there, everybody's holding their hands, trying to help each other. So, and even after PIH, we also have an alumni page where opportunities are shared. We celebrate our win, we encourage each other. So, yeah, it's actually a place you should be. Then, how does it help my journey? That is to build self confidence. There are a lot of things that I have not actually thought of doing before I became, before I, I actually I was privileged to be part of PIH, Farm Incubation or Fellowship. Uh, it's able to build my confidence. Like, okay, I can actually step beyond my comfort zone. I can actually, okay, impact others. I don't need to do only things that are comfortable for me. It actually like, motivated me because when you see someone in another university, maybe not even your class or maybe another level, doing some particular things, you'll be like, ah, this person is also a pharmacy student. So that's one of the things that PIH actually helped me with. It helped me to build my self-confidence and motivated me to do more. And even after PIH, post-PIH experience, I'm still using the knowledge I've gained the, from the speakers that they invited to, because we got the opportunity to, from different speakers from different fields, to actually come to talk to us. So I actually got more enlightened about, okay, different aspects in pharmacy. Okay, should I, is it for me? You know, sometimes we like, I don't know which aspect I should go for. But like everything is actually a journey, career is a journey. So I had the opportunity to actually, okay, hear from different speakers and know if this is actually in my line of interest. And that actually also helped me even after PIH. Then you get mentorship. Ah, I was still with a very wonderful mentor from Adiola. And even till last month, we still spoke. She was still ready to guide me about, okay, which, where do I want to do my project? So this was a, that's one of the opportunities you get from PIH. You get someone that is already doing, you know, when you have someone that is holding your hands, that is already ahead of you. And this person is actually concerned about your goal. That is what a, a leverage PIH will give you. Like my mentor, now she was still asking me, okay, oh, okay, how do we know which um, department I really want to do my project? She shared her own experience about her project, even though she has done a master's now in Oxford and all. So you get to get um, the opportunity to have a mentor that will actually be like a lasting relationship with a mentor. So there are a lot of things that PIH has actually done for me, and I'm really grateful. And I really want to encourage everyone that is attending because I saw that the deadline is this month, August 34th. I want you to put your effort. Don't just say, ah, um, it's free. You know, the way people take things that are free. <laughs> but put your effort like, okay, this is something I want to invest. And when you get the opportunity to actually be part of the program, uh, fellowship, ensure you are dedicating time. Okay, so there'll be a lot of you read books, you, you will do research, um, they're going to be opportunity to collaborate, talk, do social impact. And so it's going to be very wise for you us everyone here to so actually try to maximize this opportunity and actually and be accountable to your mentor to the team when you need help about something or you're having exams not just okay because it's free now not take the program serious because that is the only way we are going to be able to maximize okay what we are going to learn even in the doing the program and post after the program so i will stop here i'm sure the rest of the alumni that are here to share their story will also talk more about how PIH has also impacted their journey. So I wanted to actually really maximize this experience. Yeah, thank you very much for this opportunity from Lyo, from Taiwo, and other, the other team members of PIH. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joanna. We are really happy to, to hear your feedback. And I hope everyone um, that listened could, could actually deduce uh, what she said early, very early in her feedback. She said uh, uh, PIH uh, gave her the, the mind shift that actually hurt her, uh, 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 all her action afterwards. So so that's what you get with PIH. You you, you get the, the right conditioning of mind that will actually enable you to um, take right decision. And of course, you mentioned um, a family that holds her hands where necessary we all need need that push 
sometimes uh, in our life. So so um, that's what one of those things that you get with PIH. So thank you very much once again, Joanna. So um, we'll, if, you, if you have any questions, please, you can always drop them um, in the chat box. Um, uh, we'll be moving on to the next alumni, um, and that is uh, Deborah Shomuiwa. So um, Deborah Shomuiwa is a, a driven public health professional dedicated to enhancing population health and well-being with a solid pharmacy background and experience, extensive healthcare experience. She's, she's bringing a wealth of expertise to our role. Deborah's research focus on adolescent health, health disparities, health diplomacy, health promotions. Her leadership is numer in numerous studies has offered crucial insights in disease risk factors and effective prevention strategies. Passionately, she's passionate about capacity building and personal development. Deborah collaborates with diverse stakeholders to lead impact training initiatives. Currently, as a research director for African Africa at Global Health Focus, she drives research efforts while she's, she serves as the role of associate editor and social media editor for public health challenge and simplifies her commitment to knowledge dissemination. Deborah Shomuiwa, multifaceted proficiency, span, spanning pharmacy, global health research, leadership and capacity building, position her as a dynamic force driving positive change in public health. Her decision, her dedication is to beckon illuminating the path towards building healthier, more equitable community. So with warm welcome, please let's welcome Deborah Shumuiwa. Deborah, the floor is yours. Hello, good afternoon. I think by the afternoon. Um, can you hear me? Hello. Oh, I'm not sure. Hello. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, all right. Okay, um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I thought of a lot of things to say, but I'm not really sure where to start now. From I'm tired yes, of the next person, just a lot. But, <laughs> but, but, um, okay, I'll start from the beginning. Um, this was around 2019. I was typically, I've always typically been a video book person and just, you know, fine. So by the time I got to like 300 and then slash 400, I was, I got, I turned into a listless student. Listless student in a way that um, I first felt like just reading was not enough. And I felt like I wasn't really doing well living at the reading. So I was just lost, just parambulating. I just felt very despondent and you know why you're already going into mental health issues? Uh -huh. So then COVID came and also all these kind of things. So then I just saw PIH, the advert somewhere on LinkedIn when I decided to be serious with it. And I was like, oh, okay, looks nice. I checked around, I saw everybody, you know, the old comments and everything. I was like, oh, looks, looks really nice. Coming into applying to PIH, Apart from maybe, let me just say pants, I didn't really know anything more about anything else apart from just read a book. So, and I don't know, I watch movies and everything. So, by the time I attended an information session, I was vibe like, okay, this seems like something that will change my life. Let's go. So, and then I attended, I got selected, which I was very proud of. That was like my highlight of the year because I came into PIH, the incubation hub, like a very, it's a lot of expectation. I just felt like my my life will move from from A from Z to A at once. So I came into the session like that, and I can say that it was fantastic. First of the thing that changed with me was I began to see people situations different. I began to see myself different because I never really 
I never really appreciated myself, you know. I guess I just I could do a lot of things, but I never really took it as like a, or like important. So it just made me see that like I'm special. It made me see that I can be anything I want. Like I'm I'm not that I'm I'm not that low. I always try to you know fix humility in everything. Not like I'm being proud, but I just try to like just put myself that like stay focused, stay focused. But I think one thing um, PIH gave me was a mindset because, and not just mindset per se, but this vision. Because when you begin to see yourself differently, then you begin to see the world differently. You begin to see what people do differently. You begin to see opportunities differently. Basically, when you are taxing or when you focus on things or when you move towards things, you move with confidence. So there's a goal or there's a vision. There's a way you move towards it that when you, when you, you know, try to attain something, you do it with confidence. And that confidence speaks for you, even without even you saying anything. So you sound like you know you know what you're doing. I think that's exactly what it did to me. Because after PIH, I connected with some tile. It was nice. It's always nice, very nice every time. Because apart from the fact that she puts you know, a lot of opportunities for you, she gives you confidence in your ability. I don't think you've ever speak to some tile and you feel like you are not in. that your thing that you have. She's going to she's going to take it so much. And this is not hype. This is just trying to tell you who you are when you're not saying it and then i spoke to from Lyle, then from the zoo and it's just i think one of the best gifts that have been given to me in PIH was just three people because i know that i could call from Taiwo today for anything i know that she will be very very willing to assist me with it. from the zoo is my friend basically so you know he has yeah he every time i want to do something that is so hard it's someone that i can just put a you know like send a message to and send a call to and she just they've assisted me in like pivoting so many things so many areas in my life both personally and professionally so that's also one thing i'm i'm, I'm apart from the fact that we have like a mindset shift or like a vision they also have like access to connection and this is not just connecting to big people i will not say they are not big people but they are these kind of big people that are very close to you and they feel like your friend so apart from the fact that you appreciate their their brilliance you appreciate their competence you also appreciate the fact that they are very, they are also interested in your personal life and your professional development. It's really a nice feeling. As someone that is dedicated to energy a lot, I like it a lot. And you know, it's very encouraging to move on. And then um what else? Okay, then I attended the research hub, which was like my first hurrah in research. And then the quarter points would be missing Prof. Don because we had a session with him and I feel like, oh, this, like, I want to do research. Like, I really want to do research. Apart from the fact that I like book a lot. I like to read a lot. I feel like I can contribute a lot more to public health generally. I didn't know what I wanted to do, like now. But moving forward in my life, then I started identifying what I would like to do in this safe space. But I knew that I wanted to do research. So we had this session with Prof. Don. And after the meeting, he just put his email and says, oh, okay, um, if you want to reach out, oh, this is nice. And one thing I learned from PIH was that yeah, if you want to move yeah, forward, yeah. you have to move forward with action. You don't just come and say, oh, yes, I would like to do this. No, you have to actually show. Action, the action is not just to show the person or to do mentor, whoever it is that, oh, I can do it. The actual you is to you yourself also so that it can spoil you on. Because by the time you will say you want to do something, there are so many things, there are like a million things that will try to distort you, a, lot, a million things that will try to distract you. That is when you know that you have one test. That's when you know that. You know that it, that's when you know that, oh, uh, something. That's when you start feeling maybe inadequate about yourself. You feel like you're not enough. But when you see people doing supposedly big things, you feel like, who am I? This is like a big thing. What, what can I do? So if you want to move forward, you have to move forward with action. This mantra has always been what I have taking ahead with me to my life so if you want to do something just do it yes if you want to just do it so you don't have to learn everything on like know the whole you don't have to know the whole curriculum before you start what you want learn on the go so when it says okay move action then i decided to just sit down okay what can i do i wrote up some things you know, make sure it's well put together and i sent it and i sent a mail and <laughs> so another thing we also learned was networking Yes, you can reach out to anybody. You're a student, so you, 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 you are, you are like a person that is ripe for mentorship. You're a person ripe for development. People always want to connect with you, even if you think you're not like you're not interesting enough. People want to see what you are up to because we are we are very intelligent people, and pharmacy students especially, we are super intelligent people. So, and then I connected to him. I said, "Oh, that's nice." And then we started this our journey of JJ and O and research. 
So it has been a very interesting two years. Yes, I can see. Because I've actually done a lot more things that I, I thought I could ever do in my life. And one thing about me is that while I like, like, while I like action, while I like things, I don't like dealing with people. Why? I don't know. I just feel like I'm not the, like a people manager a lot. I still struggle with it now, but I think I'm better than maybe last one and a half year of my life. I don't really like people management. I feel like it's too exhausting. I just want to deal with people on one stretch and then go away. That's it. Or <laughs> I've had to, because I've seen in this life that while you can do a lot of technical things, while you can do a lot of reading, you can do research, you can do this. One of the, one of the very important, important aspects that you have to do, like, if you want to be anybody successful in any area of your life, feel like be stuck in the lab doing research, people like the academia doing something, something. One, of the, one very important thing you have to learn in life is people management. Even if you are good, everybody is a leader. Even if you think you don't have that big position, I think you end up having to communicate to people sometimes. No, sometimes, every time. Then um, soft skills, communication, you know, things like that, they are really important. They are what sells in whatever area that you are. So I had to like learn, I have to deal with people. It's, it's, it's hard, but I think I've grown over the time. And I can say that everything is started from PIH because I can tell you that the difference between me when I just saw that advert, I was like, oh, let me try. It looks nice. Let me go. Looks nice. First of all, I had to check what it's about. And I read, you know, then I read about the people, the co-founders, and then amazingly, yes, amazingly was my mentor then. So she had, we had this call, and the kind of motivation she also gives you, huh? Just feel like yes, now I can be anything I want to be at this very moment. Let's go, you get. So it's so it's, it's really nice. It's really nice. Apart from apart from meeting the co-founder and meeting the people, I've had friends, you know, and. It's really great. Uh, for me, as someone that I can call myself quite shy, okay, maybe I'm not shy. Maybe I'm just a closet shy. Yeah. I'm just shy to the world, but not shy. But I'm very shy to a lot of things. I always hide from things a lot. So I think I can say that I'm less hiding now. And I've gained confidence to speak to people. I've gained confidence to you know, seize opportunities. Because every time I see something, I always try to look for ways that I'm not qualified for it. I think it's just reflect. I don't know if a lot of uh, stress is learning, but something that we need, something that is underlining a lot of things, lack of confidence, because I mean, people may not really talk about it, but I think it's something that is popular. When we look out and then we see these things look so big, everything looks so fanciful, and we'll be like, oh God, who am I? But from PIH core 3 to now, I always say this to everybody that I need, that it can be anything you want to be can do anything you want, anything at all. Just want it, that's it. Just say you want it. You want it enough, okay, fine. Because that desire, that zeal will spoil you on. By God's grace, you get to whatever height you can dream of. And the only, the only limiting factor is your mind. If you, if you could join your mind and tell your mind that now I want, like, this is where I can be, this is the height of my attainable success. That, it is that height that you will get to, and that's where you will stop. So always open your mind to opportunities. When you listen, when you speak to your fellows and you see you see what other people in your court or other things they do, it's, it's very encouraging. When you go into the alumni community and you see people doing other things just as you, you are wild. You're not you are not wild into jealousy. You are wild into motivation because wow, it spurs you to continue your work. You know, it's, it's it's very encouraging. It's nice, and then you get to also be motivated, meet new people. You know, nice people. And then oh, it's really nice. And apart from the fact that I've got to meet people, I've grown in confidence, I've grown in opportunities, I've also grown in my role at people because my network has expanded. From PIH, I grew into Innovam. I, I also work with Innovam in the training and development team, where we, over the past year, over the past year, we've trained over a thousand students in several, in several tech skills, which is really important because while we're also doing this facilitation, presentation we're also training i'm also training myself which is nice which is really really nice you also get to meet other people like Kyle, Ben Gritman, and you have them as not just leaders but you have them as friends which is really fantastic trust me it's really fantastic um but i will say this but i think i should visit it again it's really fantastic and then um from ghf to um to uh oh, sorry from innovam to ghf where i had to deal with not just um, not just researchers, but institutions, you know, new developments. 
and it's really nice for you to be able to set the direction for things for for progress for capacity development it's really great and then you um, i moved to public health challenges which is a journal and this is like a new old spectrum of um, editorial work because apart from the fact that you also expand your mind by seeing um several forms of you know authentic and original and fantastic original work from people you also get to communicate to several sets of people get the ideas of new research get the ideas of certain strategic action for new work in terms of public health space apart from that i also exposed to editorial duties which apparently i didn't know it was this you know great but that's what exposure gets you that's why it says that you have to like just do it because you don't have to know everything on the go you learn as you as you move along which is really nice so i think um uh, for me basically i can see i can see that um pih is from the beginning i can see pih from the beginning all to the journey and this is not like a journey that has one specific destination in mind get it's, it's a far-reaching journey something that we, con- we are going to continually experience but in all of it, I can see PIH all around it because that, that's the start. That's the way, that's the way that, you know, I, 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 I got the intuition. That's the way that I got the, the idea, the zeal, the vibe. That's the way I got the confidence because I don't think if you had spoken to me about, let's say two years ago about this, I'd be like, oh, okay, I'll just mind my business. I'll read my book and then probably just stick to one community pharmacy, which... I would have looked there right now a lot because while but that didn't make me you know that that involved me and that was the reason um I got my internship because I did my internship at GSK when we had our interview and then we talked about how I've transcended across this you know journey of career and everything it was really outstanding to them and I was I was selected as part of an intern and I worked in the marketing department and we did a lot of work um okay Besides this closure, we had a lot of, across the year, we had several strategic development goals for young pharmacists. You know, we were able to set new direction for part. We, also, we were also able to develop new content development strategies, which even will not be, even if they will not be transcended in, in the Nigerian market anymore because of the closure, but has been, it has been transported to the global market, which also received recognition for, which was really, really amazing to me. And I just felt, I felt really, um, I felt really appreciated because I didn't really know I could do all this until like I started doing them. And I would like to thank PIH because I think uh, because PIH was, you know, was the start, was like the seed that was sown. The seed was sown at PIH and it has continued to blossom and it will continue to blossom. So I look forward to, you know, getting more entrances to the court. I hope that you apply. Yes, it is really great. Apart from the fact that you get real capacity building and personal development. You also get to have it in a fun environment, which doesn't make you feel less of yourself. Yes, you always feel as special as you are because you are really special people. Yes, you are amazing people. And you know, you, you are just, you are, we are going to catapult ourselves to the future that we want, you know, that we see ourselves, that we want ourselves to get to. So I hope that we apply and then we you know, put our best foot forward. So let's put together our applications, our motivation letters, you know, uh, you know, send it all in and look forward to having a great time. And an important element that we have to look forward to is that, well, uh, while I can see that I learned this, I think I was able to maximize PIH because I was able to come into PIH then with a lot of like, um, anticipation. I was looking forward to something that would shift me. I was really looking forward to it and I really, really gained it. So don't just come in just like a day star, like, oh, yeah, let's like, just, no. I have to come in like with your focus, come in with expectation. Because one thing in life is that you will find what you seek. If you just come to you say, oh, let me just make up the numbers, you will, you will definitely make up the numbers. But if you come with a full heart and, you know, a stable mind and just come in with a lot of expectation and zeal and mind and energy and everything that is everything that is going to be good for you or just seek because you will find, like I said before, you always find what you seek. So if you seek um very still waters you will find still waters but if you seek the energy and you seek the strength and you seek the network and you seek everything that is good that is exactly what you are going to find in PIH because PIH is a very good ground for you to to get started in whatever career journey that you are thinking you are looking forward to be and I look I also look forward to you know connecting with you know the new entrants and you know 
enjoying the process, I guess. That's all. Um, I think that's all for now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, um, Deborah, for that insightful um, session. Um, so something that actually stood out um, is um, um, confidence. I, we listened to her while we, we, we hear what she said, um, and I think the majority of us will be able to relate to that. When, when we see something glamorous and all fancy, we'll feel, we'll, we'll feel how, will I, how will I be able to, to, to do this? And, and then self-doubt come in, then self-sabotage come in, then at the end of the day, you could not, you could not do anything. So um, that's one of those things that the, 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 the fellowship will do to you, or PH, P, P, um, PIH will do to you. It will actually instill confidence into you, into all that you need to do. So um, no, um, not to waste any more of our time, um, we'll wrap this uh, alumni nice session up. Um, with um, the last um, speaker, which is um, Fitz Omotayo. Um, Fitz Olanriwaju Omotayo is an undergraduate currently undergoing her studies in pharmacy at the University of Nigeria, Onsuka, and public health in the University of the People, California, USA. She is passionate about global health with specific interest in antimicrobial res resistance research, health policy, infectious and non-infectious disease. With over five years volunteering experience, Faith has been involved in different social impact activity with different non-profit organizations to co-organize successful philanthropic projects and social development program to achieve the sustainable development goals. She is currently enrolled as a facilitator for Simbi Health Advocacy Program 2.0, a program that uses innovative ideas to produce user-friendly information to young people regarding mental health and sexual health. She has about three publications to her name, which focus on sexually transmitted diseases, um, sexual health, and re-emerging infectious diseases. Through her outstanding leadership, fit aspire to equip young professional with personal and professional development strategy. She's, con she's a continuous learner who constantly seek innovative way of preferring solution to healthcare problem, even in underserved communities. So with a warm welcome, let's welcome Faith Olari Waju Omotayo. Faith, over to you. Hello, hello everyone. Am I on the move, please? Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Please. Okay. All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here. First of all, I would like to say a big thank you to um PIH leaders for finding me worthy to be a part of this session. Honestly, I can say that one of the best things that has happened to me so far in this pharmacy school is is PIH. This is not about exaggeration. You know, we've we've all heard from the previous alumni of the program and they really told us about how amazing the platform has been. You know, if I continue to talk about PIH, it's even going to exceed the 10 minutes I was given. Um, I, I actually heard about, I think I found out about PIH during COVID. Um, I was just in second year in pharmacy school. I resumed second year actually as a direct entry student. And I resumed January and we went on strike, I think March or so. So we were at home and doing nothing. And I just applied, you know, I didn't, that, that was why when they told you the other time, it's not really about your experience, just giving your best to your application. That's what I'm going to say because you can't really say this is one experience I had that made me stood out, but then I was just being unique in my own way. So I put in my application, I submitted, and fortunately I was accepted into the program. But I, my device had a problem and I couldn't, 
I couldn't follow up on I couldn't follow up on the application because we were meant to send a confirmation message if you are interested or not. So I, I I didn't know until some days after. And then I I think I messaged Ephraim, which he told me to message somebody and fortunately I, I had I, I got a second chance. So in my case, if I had a second chance, you might not possibly get the second chance. So now moving into the program, it was just one of the best things that has ever happened, like I said. Um, first of all, you know, I, in as much as I know I'm in pharmacy school, I don't even know what I want to do. I just, I was just, in, though I know I like social impact projects. I love, I love, you know, uh, SDGs. I love, I love public health, but I didn't really know what is it that I want to really do in this um, space of pharmacy that I just found myself into. So I needed a platform, I needed a space to get clarity, which I can say that PIH remains the platform that gave me such voice. I needed the confidence, I needed so many things. You know, as a young, a budding pharmacist, I am so glad PIH gave me the platform. And for me, in my own case, I was very intentional about PIH, honestly. I was very, very intentional because it was like a second chance in the first place. So I, apart from getting it on a platter of gold, uh, for me, it was more like, oh, this space that you are is somewhere you need to really utilize very well. And I can say that um, one of the best connections I have made so far has come from PIH as well because the, then we all we, they, they always group up group up in group us into different um, groups where we do different activities together. So these guys really assisted my life a lot. So um, PIH, I was very very intentional about my journey in PIH, and that's what I'm going to encourage each and every one of us here. Whenever you get into the program, please be intentional about why do you want to join. And I remember during the session, I think the first session, um, Fam, Fam T told us about some of us when they told us to write about our mentor or something. I think I wrote John Obidi. I know, <laughs> I know, PIH really made me to understand the difference between who a role model uh, a mentor is. You know, it really helped me to understand that you don't really have to, you don't really, you don't really need to know, um, uh, somebody like um, the WHO director before you can start something in the in the public health space or whatever sector that you want. You know, they brought speakers, amazing speakers that talked to us about what we wanted. You know, there were so many career sessions on the platform. So we were able to, you know, oh, this is something I found uh, resonating with me and my interest, that kind of thing. And, you know, there were competition. I can even say that the fact that I love social impact projects today, really the interest actually came from PIH as well. You know, we had different sessions on pitch, pitch making, I think from, from Lyo and, and there was another farm since then that really did so many justice to that topic from Kennedy, Adebi, so many of them back then. They really did a lot of justice to some of these things that I found myself, even though it wasn't really direct, but then, you know, I, I was really doing something around what my interest was, and it was very, 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 very interesting. So, um, apart from that, the mentorship I got from PIH remains one of the best ever. Fam Adiola Abam Shaye is my mentor. Um, she really assisted my life you know she gave me so many she, we, we had different sessions together personal session and up to date anytime i just reach out to her she'll be like don't always don't forget to reach out anytime you need help you know this is someone that's on a normal day i might not have had such opportunity if not for um pih platform and like i said pih really made me to be very much intentional about my interest in in public health very early Currently now I am the I am the national director for national chairperson for PANS Public Health. You know, this is something 
that I don't even know the past president. I don't. I don't even have the past president contact. You know, it was from recommendation to the other. Because from PIH, I later got to know that PANS was recruiting people for PANS National Public Health, in which I applied. I worked under Yusuf, and then the following year, I worked under Martin. Then the next year, they recommended me for the next, the chairperson. You know, I can actually say that PIH was really the platform that, that assisted me to really become more um, intentional about some of these things early in all from pharmacy school, you know, it really helped me, honestly. You know, knowing about PIH from my, my second year was just one of the best things that has happened. And I remember in my third year, when I was telling people about PIH, I think I saw some, so I, 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 I was always putting it on pharmacy UNN platform then. And I am so glad I, I found a good number of pharmacy students in UNN. And then some of them even came to me, oh, Faith, what can you even say about and PIH, and any time I tell them, you know, if you just need any question on clarity, please just apply for PIH. I don't really have strength to talk much because this is a platform that is not just going to help you to know what you want for yourself. It's going to assist you to even, you know, it's going to help you to connect with other people. It's going to build you personally and professionally. And then when I talk about opportunities, you know, when they mentioned from T the other time that she's always posting opportunities, you know, this is one thing that is so amazing and so exceptional about PIH. You know, aside the fact that PIH post opportunities, the way PIH celebrates uh, the fellows is something to be learned from. Like, the way PIH celebrates those. Like, even the least achievements, PIH will celebrate you and you just have this confidence and this zeal. You see fellow students doing well in their own section, sector, you know, it's something that I really enjoy more, being a fellow of PIH. Um, I remember the Global Health Mentorship Program I did, the program was from US, um, it was from PIH. Then there was this Millennium, Miracle Corners of the World, even Millennium Fellowship was also from PIH. Then Miracle Corners of the World, MCW Global, which is an amazing platform. In fact, I recently won a grant. There's all, there, are, there are always grants on the platform so that you can always apply for. This actually comes from PIH. I think they just posted the, the opportunity and you know applied the first stage, applied the second stage, applied the third stage. Or do I even talk about the fact that the notes I have from PIH during my course, so I still keep them. There is no time I want to travel. It's one long note. And I was always blaming myself, why didn't I even use a very mini jotter? Because it's one, like, one higher education note. I always keep that note with me, very dear to me, because most of the social impact clarity sessions and all these things that were discussed during the section, you know, was very, very fantastic, you know. And I don't really want to keep repeating what my fellow, um, my, the, my, the alumni have actually talked about. I don't really want to keep repeating what they have said. Do we talk about research? Research is one of the fundamental things that PIH does. You know, then, it's not like now. Then, they always ask if you're interested in joining this. So now, I think the, the, the process is now more complex than it was then. So, you know, this is one thing that PIH will also help you. You know, we have from you. So, from you, so I remember then, I, I think I had a question or something. I can just easily slide into his DM and ask, and he will answer. You know, you have that platform already. And I remember those days when a speaker comes to speak to us, then, you know, something will tell us. Being at some of these things, you know, they were very, very amazing things that PIH really, really helped us to learn early, you know. So, um, I just want to encourage you all to just give in your best. The truth is that if I continue to talk about what you are going to gain from PIH, well, in as much as that is going to be a motivation for you, but I just think that if that motivation might not really last if you are not very, very intentional 
about um, what you want from PIH. So, like I said, PIH really helped us. Then PIH always make opportunities open. I remember the last court, there was this uh, opportunity to learn from someone who works directly with WHO, and PIH still made the webinar open for everyone. Because somebody like me, I love, I love anything that has to do with the health of people, especially people in underserved communities. So, then. One notable thing, I'm sorry, I'm taking more than the 10 minutes, but then one notable thing PIH also helped us was getting an accountability partner. Oh my God. I know it was not really, it was not really a serious topic then. I think it was just around December or so, and I'm still just talk about it on group chat, this and that. But, you know, I'm so grateful I, I got one, even though it's not from PIH, from the, but then, it really helped me to be accountable, to really, you know, to to know that I am I am responsible for reporting some certain progress and you know, um, even progress and challenges. You know, it just gave me it just really helped my eyes to really learn about some of these things early enough, and I can tell you for a fact that. This is one thing that is going to help you on your career journey. And I love the fact that PIH has now incorporated social impact projects into one of the sessions, which um, fellows will now get to do social impact work, even in their Indian com um, community. So I am so grateful for the platform that PIH has given me. I don't want to start counting many opportunities I have gotten from PIH. But one thing I can say for a fact is that PIH has, has been one. There is no time PIH will call me and I will say no. In fact, I pray there will be nothing serious or emergency because PIH, my story is not complete without PIH, honestly, because PIH has remained one of the amazing platforms. Okay, someone, okay, the other time when they talked about having three research professors, I can tell you now that it's now seven. I think there was a mistake there. You know, I got to know about all this research thing and all. Even though I realize it's not really, really my thing, but then research is still part of public health, but I love more of health promotion, even in my immediate environment. You know, PIH really gave us this amazing part. So I just want to say a very big thank you um, to the organizers and every single person that is working to build lives, to mold lives in PIH. This is really a wonderful platform. And I just want to encourage you, please, Take it serious. Have a note. Like, if eventually, if you get into the the program, please be very, very intentional about it, and you know, be very, very intentional because the truth is that you are going to gain so much more than you ever think of. So, thank you so much, everyone. It's really a pleasure to be here this afternoon. Thank you all. Wow. Thank you very much, Faith, for this um, beautiful insight. We really, really um, appreciate your time. Um, so, um, notable um, um, stuff from what Faith said is that uh, we have to, um, and PHI helps her clear up security at the early stage of, of, of a pharmacy, um, school, and, and, and career. So, so, that's one of those things PHI will do to you. It's, it's, it's fine to be confused, it's fine for things to look modeled together initially, but if you want clarity, if you want um, um, to clear all those doubts and kind of put yourself on the right track, PHI is one of the places to be. Um, another thing she said is you get linked up with opportunities. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm, 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 with this few time that I've, I've, I've been, opportunities to um, view um, um, from titles, um, What's happening? I've seen several, several, and a day would not go by without her posting opportunities, both on her status on, and on every other um, social media platform. So we'll get opportunities um, um, with PHI. So, um, and another thing that I will take from all the speakers that I've, that I've talked before now is that you have to be very intentional. You have to come with clear expectation. You have to know exactly, uh, um, you, it's, it's, you will not know. Uh, um, to the to the nitty gritty what um, it, it is that you want, but at least you must be intentional about it. You have to to come 
um, um, with, 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 a, with an expectant heart to, to actually gain something from both the fellowship. And that, 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 that applies to your application and also um, if, if eventually you get selected um, to all activities that will be eventually done in the court. So um, um, thank you very much. Um, I'll say thank you very much to all our speakers again. Um, because we have actually, we actually we've gone overboard this session to, to end like 30 minutes ago. So we'll just go directly to uh, the Q and a question and answer session. So please, if you have any question, please you can raise up your hand, then um, um, you can ask your question directly. Anyone, please, the floor is open to everyone. Can we have someone raising up their hand? Um, Abdukuyum. You can go ahead. You can go ahead, Abdukuyum. Abdukuyum, you can you can ask your question. So if you have questions, please just use the, you can raise your hand, you can drop your question in the chat box, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. So in the absence of question, I be, so that means uh, in the course of the the session, we've probably answered your question. Okay, Toby, please, you can unmute your mic and ask your question, Toby. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Yes, it was really an insightful session. Yeah, my question is very simple. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm aware that this program is going to be very, very beneficial to those of us who would or who may be selected, you know, if we meet the criteria. Um, on a scale of one to 10, how is it going to be very engaging? Is it going to be a very, very engaging one? Since we know we're going to have to balance that with um, school activities and any other extracurricular activities that might be there. So on a scale of one to 10, how engaging is it going to be? No doubt it's going to be impactful, but um, so that we can mentally prepare for this. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Toby. So, um, I, I, I would say maybe, I really don't know what to put on the scale, but let me let me just say, let me run through the activities so maybe you can be able to put a, a scale to it so that you can mentally prepare. So, um, we have weekly activities. So, would have in a week would have two activities. On Wednesday, we have the town hall meeting, right? So the town hall meeting will just be among the participants. So it would be one of the participants taking every other person in a particular topic, right? And it will be very engaging and interactive. So everybody gets share experiences, share opinions. Then on Saturday, we have um, webinars where we have external facilitators from different spheres of life, right? to take sessions and the sessions will probably last at most maybe two hours at most two hours then um at least we would also have you you would pair you in groups to work on projects right so those projects would be like they'll have a timeline so you can among yourself in the group you can choose to split how you want to since it's going to be a group project it will reduce the burden right so you can be able to um, share the work among yourself and prepare for the time to present the the work um then for those who would be in the research hub you would have you would be select you take you know sessions and trainings we also make sure to we also try to ensure that even for those who would be taking the general program and the research orb as well, it won't be too tasking for them um, so that, you know, they can also manage it with school as well. So um, I would allow you to put a scale to that. I don't know if I should put a scale to that because I believe that 
you know, it's relative for everybody, but just know that you would need to put in your time as well to it. So, yeah, you can just plan that time in your schedule. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so, um, okay, okay. So, any other question? Thank you, Toby. Any other question? Please don't hesitate to raise your hands. And please, um, okay, so if you're not on the WhatsApp group, I'm going to share the link to the WhatsApp group as well. So you can join the WhatsApp group because it's also an opportunity for you to ask your questions, you know, even after this info session. You can also ask your questions as well. Um, okay, so I've dropped the link to the WhatsApp group. So Hope is asking, could you give a list of the requirements needed for the program? So um, we mentioned at the start of this session, we talked about the application journey. We talked about you needing a motivation letter, a CV. We talked about, you know, how to draft a CV, like what a CV should contain. Talked about what your motivation letter should contain. We talked about your, um, you know, your student identification, your ID card, or maybe a course form or something you know, could pass on for that. Then, of course, your personal details. And, of course, you know, who, who you'd like to mentor you, suggestions for that, and, you know, other questions that are in the application process as well. So, um, yeah, those are, like, the major requirements, the major things you need for the application process. Okay, so I've dropped the link to the WhatsApp group in the chat box, so you can always ask. Okay, so Abdul Kuyum is asking, good afternoon, everyone. I really enjoyed the session. My question is, are we going to learn new skills apart from the mentor mentee sessions and the project? Yes, of course. So you know that for everyone who, you know, passed through the program, it depends on how they want to see it. So perspective is everything, right? So in the course of, if you are selected to take a town hall meeting or a town hall session, you would probably have to, you know, go back, read up on some topics and then, you know, teach others and also engage them. So you're learning other skills in like leadership. You're learning how to coordinate sessions. You're learning how to manage sessions, right? How to manage people. If you are a team lead in any of the group for the social impact project or case presentations, you also learn how to, you know, um, come up with ideas, how to create ideas, how to manage team, how to follow up, how to tolerate people, Right. So, you know, for everything you have to take up during the course of the program, there's always one skill or the other that you have to learn. So it's it's just the perspective of how you see it. Right. So um, and yeah, and basically even some of the webinars during the course of the webinars, when we have some of the facilitators share about their journey, tell us about, you know, what they do. You can also, you know, pick in one or two things about skills, about, you know, platforms where you can learn some of these skills regardless digital skills technical sorry technical skills you can you know learn about platforms where you can take some of this um you know pick up the skills so yes yes um thank you abdu kuyum okay so any other question you're welcome you're welcome um any other question please don't be shy to ask your question Okay, so we, we also understand that some of you are writing exams, right? And we don't want to um, take too much of your time because we also understand the importance of, you know, academic excellence. So in the absence, I've dropped the link to the WhatsApp group in the chat box, so please endeavor to join. So in the absence of any question... Um, in the absence of any question, I would hand over to pharmacist Taiwo. Okay, sorry, we have somebody raising up your hand. Okay, so Annie, 
you can you can unmute your mic to ask your question. Okay, thank you for your explanation. I I don't I like to I like the content of this training. Like I want to know if uh, it will there will be a selection stages as the program as the programming involves. Oh, okay. Um, so yes, just as we mentioned earlier in the application journey, when once you have missed, oh, I may okay. have missed some information, so I'm sorry. Ah, no problem, no problem. I'll just go right again. Okay, so oh yes, so in the application journey, we um the process starts from when you apply. So when you apply, um, you would have to wait because the team behind stage would um review the applications and then after the application is being reviewed we'll send email to those who have been selected for the first stage then they would now proceed to the next stage which is the interview stage and then that's the final stage right so anyone who passes the final stage will be sent an email that they've been fully selected into the program so i hope i've been able to answer your question Hi, Annie. I Anne, I hope I've been able to answer your question. Okay, so um, if you have any other question, please do not hesitate to raise your hands to ask your question. Like I was saying, we understand that some of you are also writing exams, right? And we also do not want to extend. We've already really extended the meeting. We don't want to take too much of your time as well. Um, so please, if you have any question, please, you can drop it on the WhatsApp group. We'll be happy to answer your questions even after this info session. Tell your friends to join. Tell your friends to apply. Thank you all for taking our time to join the info session. We appreciate you all. I'm going to be handing over to Pharmacist Taiwo to give us the closing remarks. Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, it has been, it has been a worthy use of our two hours plus. Yeah, two hours plus. All right. Well done to you all. And I congratulate you in advance, right? Because you have taken the right step to understand the commitment that you will be making <laughs> across the next five, six months, right? And I truly, truly wish you the very best. I cannot wait to welcome you officially into the program. You know, it was very nice to hear the testimonials of the alumni, fantastic. And it, many of them alluded to being unclear, just like you, right? Just before they came into the program. And now from their bias, you can, you can hear them doing amazing stuff. Look at pharmacist uh, Deborah Shomuyua, who is uh, the Director of Research for Africa Global Health Focus. She is an associate editor for a leading journal. Look at Taiwo Shokumbi, who is leading the Young Researchers Hub in his university. Amazing stuff. Look at Faith, who is doing amazing stuff. You know, she's Mama Public Health in Nigeria. If you're a pharmacy student and you're interested in public health and you don't know Faith, then you are not doing something right. So it's very good. You know, to, to, to see that we have been able to uh, play a role in the success story of our alumni. I was so impressed to see Joanna organizing a LinkedIn optimization summit just a few weeks ago. And this transcends pharmacy. Students from different departments were part of the summit with great testimonials to show for it. So indeed, you can drive change in your own corner of the world, wherever you are, right? But first, you must be empowered to do so with self-awareness, sharpening your skills, driving, leveraging quality relationships, networks. So beyond the relationships you will enjoy in the program, you also have relationships that you will enjoy in the program uh, after graduation with the alumni community, right? For us, our goal is to really and truly walk the talk. In Nigeria, we say that as men of honor, we join hands in pharmacy practice. As men of honor, we join hands. And Pharma Incubation Hub is really that phenomenal way by which we join hands 
as pharmacy students, pharm young pharmacists, as key stakeholders in the pharma profession in Nigeria and indeed in Africa. And I truly, truly wish you all the very best. Put in a great application. And we cannot wait to welcome you officially into the program. If you've got more questions, please ask on the support group. Feel free to spread the word. Remember, the goal is to reach pharmacy students across Africa. So share the opportunity with pharmacy students in your networks, in your university, not just in your class, even people in classes above you, classes beneath you. So far, they meet the criteria, second year to final year, right? Reach out to pharmacy students across Africa in your own network and let's help more pharmacy students across Africa to come into the light, <laughs> to gain insights that will be relevant for their personal growth and ultimately for their career success. Uh, many thanks to my team for putting this together, pharmacist Timilei Oni, who is our program director. And we have here also Benga uh, Aji Feruke, who is our program coordinator. We had Hope as well. Uh, Hope uh, works with the team as a, a communications associate. We've got great people who will support you along the journey, right? We cannot wait to have you on board. Thank you very much, everyone, and do enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.